We are now doing 11-4. We're multiplying radical expressions. It's crazy 80s day. That's why we're the thin tie. Uh, this is number two on page 496, square root three and square root five, which is now basically we're working the other way when we're multiplying radicals. Rather than break these down, we're multiplying them through. So what you really need to see here is that root 3 times root 5 can be written as the square root of 3 times 5. Simple as that. You take all these elements and you put them underneath the radicand and you multiply them out and you get root 15. So it's pretty straightforward. If you were working backwards from root 15 and you were asked to simplify, you could write root 3 times 5 and root 3 times root 5. But it doesn't simplify it because these aren't perfect squares. Nothing came out of the radical. So really this is the simplest form. Let's look at number 8. What would we do for number 8? We'll write one radicand, right? Go ahead, write run radicand. And what are we going to put in there? Yes. Let's write it like this first. Go ahead and write that. Your two brackets, Hazel. And you're writing, basically you're multiplying this times that. And what do we do to, when we multiply this times that, we've got a FOIL method situation. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do that. We get x squared, as Chris said, the square root of x squared plus 1x plus 2x plus 2. And that simplifies into, over here, the square root of x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay? The square root of x squared plus 3 Simply multiplying these things out with the FOIL method. I did it the long way so you could see all the steps. Right? All right. Let's try another. All right, this problem is uh, number 14. We started with the square root of a minus b times the square root of a plus b. And what we do is we multiply that out. We make one big radical sign, and then we put these two things in it, and we multiply them out. So you get square root, uh, sorry, a plus b times a minus b. And these are our FOIL symbols. First, a times a is a squared. Outside, a times negative b is negative ab. Inside, b times a, which is equal to positive ab, because you can switch b a or a b, same thing, commutative principle. And then b times negative b is negative b squared. Negative a b and plus a b are going to cancel. There, there are inner terms, they cancel, and we're left with the square root of a squared minus b squared. Who remembers what this is in our factor? What's this called? First of all, is it a binomial or trinomial? It's a binomial. When we have a binomial with squares on each side and a minus sign in the middle. Difference of squares. Good stuff. That's difference of squares, just so you know. All right, so we're moving now to number 20 on the same page, 496. Root 7x times root 21y. <clears throat> now, I know you're thinking probably that you just go ahead and multiply these out. You draw one big radical sign and you multiply 7 times 21 and x times y. You're not thinking anything wrong, but what we need to show you is that you might get yourself into a, quite a big um, situation before you know it. And it's better to simplify it first. So what I'm going to do is show you a real simple example, fractions. When we weren't doing fractions, 5 eighths times 1625, sure, you could go ahead and go 5 times 16 and 8 times 25, right? But you learned something different, which was to simplify first. So what would you rather do before you multiply everything out? Because you don't want a big number in the end. Will? What would we simplify? Five plus five, yeah. yeah, five goes into 25, right? And eight goes into? Right. And we're left with, then we multiply, and we're left with two over five. And look how much simpler that was than if we had gone ahead and multiplied from the top. So it was much better to simplify first, and then your answer is guaranteed pretty much to be simple. You still have to check this just to make sure you got it, but in this case, 2 over 5 is obviously okay. It's the same thing with radicals, okay? First of all, what is the root of, let's just do an exercise. The root of x times the root of x. This is a, a review. We did this the other day. What's the root of x times the root of x? x squared. Root x squared, which equals? Uh, x, right? What's root 7 times root 7? Seven? equals 7. That's the shortcut. You can say root 49 and the root of 49 is 7. I know that's true, but that's a long way to do it. When you see two of these, when they match, boom, you pull it on out. Root 7 times root 7 equals 7. So that's just one of the rules that you have. When you've got the root of something times the root of something, it, it comes out of the radical sign automatically. 
So what about another example? You give me an example. Root something weird, x, y, z times root x, y, z. It equals x, y, z. Simple as that. You don't have to get complicated about it. It's as easy as x, y, z. There you go. Now we're going to do root 7x times root 21y. And we'll bring Katie back in the picture. Thank goodness. Here. Um, first of all, is there a way to break that down first? Before we multiply 7 times 21 and get a big radical? Yes, you can break down 21. So let's rewrite this as root 7, root 7 times root x. Okay. And this will be root 7 times root 3 times root y. So we've broken it down. And why we did that? Well, because we've noticed what? What have we done now? What have we found? We found, it just like cards, what have we found? A matching pair. matching pair. So let's pull it together. So we've got root 7 times root 7. Write that down. I'm writing every single step for instructional purposes only. I realize that you're probably going to get faster and you're, just gonna, you're not even going to need to write that down. You're just going to say, oh, matching pair equal to 7. But for now, I'm writing everything out. So root x, oh, sorry, root 3. Yeah. We're rearranging the cards here. We're shuffling them around and putting them in. You know how you play cards and you arrange them in just the right way if you play poker or anything else? Well, here we go. We want to put our pairs together and we're going to put our numbers together. We're going to put our x and y's together. Simple as that. So root 7 times root 7 equals what? 7. seven according to what we know, it's equal to 7. So 7 root 3. Root 3 cannot be simplified. Anybody know why? Is there a perfect square that divides into it? No. So that's it. Root 3. Root times x times root y can't be simplified, but we can put them together now. So we'll put root x times root y. So what you do in the end of your problems, once you've broken them all down, and you realize there's nothing else you can take out yet, root x times root y. When you realize there's nothing else you can do to break that down. In other words, we can't, take root, we can't break root 3 down. We can't break root x down. We can't break root y down. So we give up and we just put them under one radicand, one, one little v or radical sign or whatever you want to call it. So it's 7. What is our answer then, Mikey? It's Final answer, just how do we write it? Do you remember? You know? Yes, it's 7. Seven? Seven. Go, Mike. 7 root y the radical sign. Yes, 7 times the root of... 3xy, okay? There you go. And that's all she wrote for that question. Put a box around it. I hope you have kept up and you can all see that and you've written it down. Is there anybody who hasn't written that down? Okay, because hurry up, because we're going to erase it in a minute. They're windshield wipers, okay? Like that.